The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Money Masters. The Money Masters. Welcome, folks. Steve Rhodes here. Hope you're having a, a great Thursday out here. As we come into these markets, you got the uh, Dow trading up 48 points right now. S&P's up 7, Composite up 13, Small Cap's up 28 cents here right now. Small Cap's are struggling this morning, maybe giving us a uh, clue out here. you got the New York Stock Exchange. That's where we're going to start. That is up 46 points. Gapped up this morning here. So we take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Let's start with that. Trading out at 86.82. And if we take a look at expansions of swing points, we would be taking a look at the high of September 14th out here on the New York Stock Exchange. That level is 85.15, all the way down to the low of uh, November 16th, when it get down to a low of 78.41. If you take those two points, and this is, you know, you've got markets that are, in this case here, the New York Stock Exchange is a little bit higher to go. I believe it will move up there into uh, tomorrow, tomorrow to Monday out here. And uh, where it will all of a sudden also get into a overbought condition. And that's where when you take a look at markets, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, you take a look at my New York Stock Exchange uh, chart out here. If you're listening on the radio, maybe listening on uh, TFN.MOBI, remember you can always catch an archive of this show on Channel 9, which you are seeing at the uh, bottom. You're taking a look at the uh, relative strength indicator. It's a great tool for being able to help you, in my opinion. I, I use it as a referring to being overbought or oversold when a condition when a market gets stretched and it's nice when uh, it does that as well as is uh, making other patterns completing other patterns out there and then also giving you some type of reversal signal on the new york stock exchange no reversal signal as of yet in fact with a, a gap up today that certainly is no reversal signal but we have still uh six hours uh just short of six hours left in the uh, trading session now what you want to do is you want to take a look at uh, contractions and expansions of swing points so again if you went from that september 14th high down to the november 6th low the 1.272 expansion is uh, about 87.14 so far the high today is up at uh, 86.84 out there so it's got a little ways to go uh, now, does it have to actually get up there and complete that? It's getting pretty close, uh, but uh, you've got to wait until you see some type of bearish signal. But everything is lining up here for at least a pullback. Uh, we'll see. Uh, now, there's enough uh, divergent indicators out there that suggest to me that what we're looking for is a significant pullback. Maybe quite a high that would be put in out here. You know, we're moving into earnings season. Uh, you know, if, uh, if, uh, uh, if you didn't catch my show uh, yesterday morning at 9 o'clock, go listen to the archive of that show on Channel 9. I'll pull up one divergent indicator out here. This is, my, this is one of my favorites when we take a look at the uh, Dow, which is GE, the general here. And uh, GE is a, a great indicator that gives you an advance warning of a, a significant move to the uh, downside. And what we're taking a look at, if you're watching us on Tiger TV on the top of the screen, you're looking at a line chart here. You know, normally if you watch my shows, I'm using candle charts, but from time to time, I'll go ahead and put line charts out here. Sometimes they just help to uh, more easily show the uh, pattern that we're looking at. And if you take a look at the, if you take a look at the GE, that's line chart on the uh, top and the bottom is the actual Dow Jones Industrials out here. And what GE does, because of its because of its small weighting structure with inside the Dow, it's a great leading indicator of a divergence out here. And those divergences have often led to a significant uh, price reversals. You take a look at this one here back in July of 2011. What you can see is GE was moving down, yet the Dow was, in essence, moving sideways out there. That was giving an indication that the GE was giving an indication of uh, watch out below. You had the same uh, type of uh, situation back in the October of 2011 time frame. Led to a, a pretty nice correction. Led down to the lows November 25th, 2011. You might remember those. That was the uh, low put in after uh, the day after Thanksgiving out there. You see another uh, situation back in the uh, March of uh, 2009, April, I'm sorry, 2012, March to April 2012 time frame. We have GE moving down. You had the Dow actually kind of moving sideways to up out there, leading to a, another reversal. And that's clearly when you take a look at what we've got right now. This one is as clear as you can get. You can see the Dow here, uh, you know, off of about the December uh, 14th high. You can see how it's making a, a move higher out here on this uh, line chart versus GE, which is clearly on its way down here, giving us a significant indication which it has done in the past. And it's been more than just a little retracement out there. 
Uh, and there are many, many, many more divergent uh, indicators out there as well. Now, I say you want to be paying attention to the uh, New York Stock Exchange as well as the uh, Russell 2000. So let's go take a peek in at the Russell 2000, see what it is doing. You may ask the question why. And the reason why is because those have been the two strong uh, leaders uh, in the uh, clubhouse out here. And as we take a look at the uh, Russell, the Russell opened at its highs today and has, in essence, traded off ever since. If the Russell closes down below today, the uh, what you'd be looking at is 877.45, trading at 880 right now. Close it below 877.45. That would be your first candle signal. That would be a bearish engulfing candle. You'd want to follow through as well. So you'll want to pay attention to the Russell 2000 for sure. Let's go out to uh, British Columbia to our hockey man, Rick. Rick, how you doing? Hey, really good. I'm glad you're doing better, Steve. Thank you. Uh, food poisoning. You ever had that? You know, I had a I had a house special chow mein many years ago. Okay. And what happens is, is you get a little bit of everything in there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I do and, know uh, what you're saying. <laughs> and uh, when you get a little bit of everything, if something just isn't quite right, uh, you know, sometimes, I don't know, you get eight or ten items in there, right? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Shrimp, absolutely. Bee, you get everything. Uh, you can pull a pork, a little everything. And, and uh, I, was just, I was feeding a sawmill with a log picker at the time. And yeah. I had my head out of the door a few <laughs> I ate it that night, and I got sick in the morning around 9, but I never really got poisoning. I just got sick from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, mine was a, uh, I had sent a, uh, I, was on the way, I was on the way back over to uh, uh, Clearwater on a Sunday afternoon. I was going to drop my granddaughter off, and, uh, uh, and I had to make a beeline, head back to the house. I got back there with like about one second to uh, yeah. go, thank God. And because I could have put out a four alarm fire easily. And so I sent a message quickly to Tom and Tommy and said, uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, and uh, that I'm going to be able to make it in because I wasn't sure what was going on. If we yeah, just well, something. that's the thing. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, an hour later, I knew what was going on. I mean, it yeah. was pretty, it was really pretty uh, clear out there. But uh, 15, 15 full hours of getting rid of it all. Oof. You know, it's pretty tricky the last few days. You just, I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask you about WFC. Yes. With, with, oh, like, WFC, like okay. Tom, like it's a tough call. You know, uh, yesterday, for example, to close, I mean, you could, you could argue we're going to, you know, go down, go up, you know. But Tom had mentioned the possibility of the S&Ps testing the 1474.51 high. Yes. Which technically on a daily, it does have a little volume up there. If I put it on like a six-month chart, right? So with that in mind, it looks to me like, well, you mentioned earnings season, and Wells Fargo comes out with earnings tomorrow. Do they? Okay, yeah, i got to get my head wrapped in. You know, and it looks to me like Wells Fargo, everything, I put it on a monthly, it's got an ABC up, it's got uh, volume sitting up there at about uh, 3660 is the high up there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, there's a little inverted head and shoulder formation on the last month. A monthly ABC structure set up to go there, so I'm just—I'd like to see what you think about that. I think, I mean, from a technical point of view, yes, it probably should and could go up there. Well, what I you? think you'll get a pretty good indication today, or at least you'll get another indication today. You know, on Wells Fargo, and what, what I just ta I'm taking a look at is just the simple, you know, the resistance line. Can it get through the resistance line, which is? in essence, that low of October uh, 11th where it, where it last gapped down. And, you know, did that, the gap down there, the volume to the downside there was 61 million shares. So, so volume-wise, that's your biggest volume day, uh, you know, and, it, and it's to the uh, downside. And that area has acted, you know, as a resistance point. It's been tested several times. The uh, first test, as, as, you know, for those folks watching on Tiger TV, was at December 18th level. So it's coming in with 35 million shares, and it was really being benchmarked against the 61 million versus the 23 on the uh, October 11 time frame. But if it, if it does close above that, Rick, what it does say is old resistance becomes new support. Now, you know, it needs to be tested, but once you close above that uh, area, you know, it says that it should go, you were saying that about the 3660 level, you know. Well, you know what, if you put it on a monthly. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it has volume sitting up there. I know Tom likes the talk about that a lot. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it, it, it kind of did an ABC up, but it really quite kind of hasn't finished it yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious if tomorrow morning we couldn't see one great big gap up on Wells Fargo to about 3660. That's, 
You know, you put it on a monthly and you put it on a weekly and, yeah, the daily doesn't look as strong, but the daily still shows uh, that there's volume sitting up there at 3660. So, um, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the camp uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that we do see a move higher into uh, Friday or Monday before we start to, uh, you know, see a reversal. Now, well, and not only that, um, the what you would call it there, uh, uh, Draghi in Europe is talking up the euro, so the euro had a big move today, which quite often helps us too. Uh, oh, is that what it was? Okay, because I, you know, I, was, oh, I, was... I, I really don't. You know how you can sugarcoat everything? I oh, mean, absolutely. Yeah. Half the countries there are broke, and, and and but I guess on paper they got enough money to to keep things going, so everybody's excited about that. Who knows? Well, everybody's got the printing presses, you know, working overtime. And, uh, and, and I actually do, uh, you know, I mean, my, I've been, been uh, telling my subscribers uh, that, you know, I'm expecting one more pop in the uh, euro up, to, uh, up towards its uh, highs out here. So, you know, well, that, was, that was a pattern that we looked at or I was looking at a couple of uh, days ago. And uh, uh, so, you know, so I do see, so with the euro moving up here, you know, it sets up the uh, market moving up. Uh, there are a number of patterns, you know, that can be completed, just like Wells Fargo, just like you're talking about. Uh, the NDX, uh, not the NDX, but the, uh, the, uh, 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 the New York Stock Exchange, you know, could have one more big pop. And, you know, that could be tomorrow, could be uh, Monday. But I, I do think it has a little bit more room to run to the upside before we start to see a uh, sell-off. Yeah, exactly. And um, you mentioned um, GE is a bellwether, but uh, um, I don't. I know IBM would would be probably second. Yes. And Triple M had a big move yesterday, but it didn't have the volume. I'm so tempted to go short that stock, but I don't know if it's today yet. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, and IBM has absolutely been uh, struggling out here. Now, what IBM did do, though. Yesterday was it came back and it tested. It's it's it is creating a little bit of a uh, support, which is that open window, you know, which is from that December thirty first level, which had four point six million shares. When it came back yesterday, it was only three point two million shares. So it's just not ready to you know to crush it to the uh, downside in IBM. So I think I think Rick that uh, watching the uh, New York Stock Exchange, watching the uh, Russell, and you're probably watching those too because. Those have been such uh, bellwether strengths out here in the marketplace. I think they'll give us the first clues. Maybe Apple will, you know, if it can bust through the uh, lows out there. But I think we'll see the real clues coming from the strong side versus the weak side. Yeah, you bet. Thanks a lot. Uh, hey, you uh, bet. Like if you have time and no callers, if you could just go over Triple M, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely, we'll do that. And thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so as we come back to the uh, markets out here, folks, we've got... Uh, Oh, we're going to break here. So we come back from the break. We'll go take a look at uh, 3M. We can take a look at anything else that you'd like as well. 877-927. That's our call number. LinkedIn is the leader in the clubhouse. I don't know if any of you saw the uh, golf uh, this past weekend or the golf they tried to play out in Kapalua, one of my favorite courses out in Hawaii. They had some winds out there for sure. Balls blowing off the greens, off of the tees out there. We get back. We'll take a look at LinkedIn. Baidu. Uh, got MasterCard to the downside. That's interesting. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of the Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow is up 43 points right now. Russell just turned slightly uh, positive. Uh, Taking a look at 3M out here. Uh, Taking a look at the weekly chart. Trade out at 96.53, which you can see on 3M. Uh, is it is uh, first it's up and over a, uh, a a resistance level here that uh, really began on July 29th when this thing cascaded to the uh, downside July 29th 2011 I should say out here now as we take a look at this I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this little resistance line that was uh, tested out here on the weekly chart so you get up above that it really becomes an a uh, support area now what we can take a look at is take a look at the swing point that it's trading into it's trading into the swing point high of July 8th out there. You can see price is already inside there. Uh, that's the red line going across my screen. That low is 96.06. Uh, so this week here, it's trading inside there. Volume is 13 million shares. Through the uh, first two trading sessions was 7 million shares. So it's got enough volume, it looks like, here to finish out the uh, week and go test the high. That high out there is 98.19. So coming into the swing point with volume says that 3M wants to go at least or should go test the high. If we go down to the daily chart out here, the daily chart, I think we'll also see that it's up above uh, the most recent swing point with volume. That most recent swing point would be October 8th. Let's just draw the line across the uh, screen out here. The uh, volume there is 2.6 million shares. I'll put a uh, black line on this one, and then we'll do the uh, same on the uh, volume bar out here. So as we do that on the volume bar, what you can, I uh, probably should make that red, you can see it. Uh, as a 3M gets up and over that area, does it with 2.7 million shares, 
the 2.4 million shares, 2.6. So it's got the volume. It's got just a tad more volume than 2.6 over that as well. You've got no bearish candle here on a, a daily uh, chart as well. So looks like uh, 3M does want to go ahead and test its highs out there. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, MasterCard. Uh, not that it's down that much. It's the leader in the clubhouse dollar-wise, only off a percent, but off seven points. Let's just go searching for clues out here in the uh, market. MasterCard certainly being one of the uh, leaders up here, being one of the stronger stocks. So MasterCard trading off of itself. Well, let me just refresh my screen and make sure that uh, I have all the data out here because I don't think I do. There we go. So MasterCard actually uh, could be setting up a, a bearish engulfing uh, candle today. Uh, this uh, gapped up yesterday, so we've got the potential of an island. So today, let's take a look. Let's take it one step at a time. So on MasterCard, which is, if you take, if I pull this back here, you'll see just how strong this is. Really, it's up at its highs, period. If I put this on a monthly chart, it might be easier for you to take a look. at. This has been most certainly a, a rocket ship. This thing, you know, from a price point of 46 bucks back in 2006 up to $525. And uh, on this last leg up here, You've only seen the bears pop out once uh, during a month. That happened to be the month of May 31st, 2012, sell in May. And, uh, but that was in the pullback there was not really that big of a deal. It was from 466 down to 394. Uh, so it was really not that, not, not that big of a deal. Now let's go back to the uh, daily chart and take a look at, because this looks like one that you're going to want, you know, here's some strength. It's really, I, I do believe that with regard to market reversal signals, that we're going to see, it's going to be the stronger hands that are going to uh, give us the signal uh, that uh, uh, want to either take a short position uh, or that the market is getting ready to pull back. And so MasterCard is certainly, you know, everybody, all of our focus tends to be on Apple. I say, you know, your focus ought to be on the uh, Russell 2000, ought to be on the New York Stock Exchange. And now I'm adding to that MasterCard. We take a look at uh, MasterCard. You can see it gapped up yesterday, uh, closed at its session highs. The high was 532.39, uh, closed really at its session highs. That's very bullish out there. Uh, 1.1 million shares yesterday. Uh, today, in the first hour of trading, 352,000 shares. So it actually has more volume so far in that first hour of trading to exceed yesterday's uh, volume out there. And it has been trading off of those highs. Now, today's open is at the 532.47 versus the close of 530. So it's up, uh, it's up over the high. Today, if MasterCard were to close below 525.20, and it's a 525.78, that would be a bearish engulfing candle out there. And what you'd want to see is you want to see some follow through tomorrow. Now, the biggest bearish case on this would actually be a, a gap down tomorrow uh, below the 522.67. So I'll make sure that tomorrow when we uh, come in and we take a look at it during uh, the uh, uh, during the 9 o'clock show, uh, the 9.30 open, that we're paying attention to MasterCard because that could certainly be giving us a, a real clue out here. Now, I'm uh, not saying it's going to give you a, a uh, you know an island reversal, but you get a bearish engulf in an island reversal, that would be a, a pretty big uh, reversal signal, at least for MasterCard, uh, so to speak. In fact, you wouldn't even need to, uh, if you wanted to short MasterCard, you wouldn't even need to wait for it to... Uh, a take out a swing point. That would be a bearish enough set of uh, signals to me, in my opinion, to uh, go ahead and take a short trade on MA. Equinox down three dollars and a quarter. Transdigim off three bucks. Uh, to the upside, Baidu's up three. United Community Bank up 48 percent. What's behind that move? BlackRock up three bucks as well. We'll be right back. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. 
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow up 19 points right now. Russell 2000 off a uh, buck. I've got Apple on my screen here, the uh, five-minute chart. Now, I cannot prove this theory. This is just my own theory out here when I take a look at, especially this is a five-minute chart that we're looking at, but my opinion, there's a prop desk out here that has directions to sell Apple. They have been doing it ever since the open out here. Whenever you see this kind of linear move on the way down and you see volume, which is really pretty steady here in Apple, you don't see anything excessive on the way down. Somebody's got some orders to be out of X number of shares by Apple by a certain time uh, today. And so you can see here, just really steady on the uh, way down here, and that is this little linear, uh, this little just when you see linear selling like this, to me that is the signal of a uh, prop desk out there that is getting, uh, that is dumping uh, shares in the uh, marketplace out there. Like I say, it's not anything that I can prove, but uh, I've watched it happen time and time again. And it's just that it's just that steadiness out there. Uh, you know, you might get one big thrust to uh, dump the rest of them, but the idea here is to make things just kind of look steady. A steady eddy and uh, nothing too uh, large out here. No, not anything too large in the way of, of volume. And so you got Apple, which has been trading off, which makes sense. You see Apple here off of the highs uh, out here. So that looks to me like uh, here you've got a prop desk out there. Uh, really, that is clearly uh, selling Apple. Again, just kind of steady movement here. Apple, I uh, will put this on the uh, daily chart and take a look at just simply the volume so far for the day in Apple. 
uh, is uh, so far 7.4 million shares. Apple does want to go and uh, has not well, closed into that bearish engulfing candle on December the 17th, still trading inside the hammer out here. That's the big one. That's that November 16th level, and that has got 45 million shares out there. So today, with 7 million shares an hour worth of trading, it's up to those, uh, it's up to those volumes. So how about that? It's up to those uh, volumes out here with the 45 million shares. We haven't seen that kind of volume in Apple really on the way down since uh, December the 5th out here. So you've got some, uh, so Apple, so watching Apple, so now it's watching MasterCard, watching the uh, Russell 2000, uh, watching uh, Apple for sure, looking for those clues. Now, let's go take a look at the financial sector out here. Uh, Rick had called about Wells Fargo. Let's just go see about the financial sector with inside the S&P 500 because that has been an area of uh, strength. So let's uh, that'll be another spot for us to identify a weakness in a, a marketplace or a reversal sign. And as we take a look at the uh, XLF right now, it's a trading out at 17 bucks. You can see it's also moving up towards the uh, top of its uh, overbought uh, condition, not giving any real reversal signal here just yet. Um, so nothing, nothing here at all that shows any kind of uh, weakness in the XLF. Let's go take a look at the other two. Uh, if you just pay attention to the XLK, the XLE, and the XLF, you've covered a majority of, uh, of the S&P sectors out here. XL, the weighting inside there. So the XLK, uh, what the XLK needs to uh, do, yeah, XLK does not look healthy at all um, out here. It's trading, been to the uh, uh, swing point low right now of January 8th, but what, it, what it's done, it's kind of in this mid area here. You know, it had that gap up on uh, January 2nd, which it was not able to hold when it got a close below that level. And the level I'm talking about, folks, is 29.48. And so it's in no, it's no, no man's land, no woman's land out here. Uh, because the next area of uh, tested support would end up now being the highs of December 31st. Those highs are 28.97. So uh, it's just not a it's, it's not an easy call out there because it's in the middle of a uh, the middle of a floor. Let's go to uh, Victor in uh, Paramus, New Jersey. Victor, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good. What do you think on uh, Peg? Where's it going? Peg. Have you have you gotten in on Peg yet? Or because now you've been watching no, this for a while. Uh, no. Just watching it. So yep. if we take a look at uh, Peg, one of the things that this uh, did uh, for you here is, I know you've been watching it, and uh, I think we might have lost Victor here. What it did do, Victor, is it, uh, it, it, it's made a point six one eight retracement, which was uh, yesterday off of the uh, low to high. That low to high we're talking about is November 15th. Uh, this is when uh, Peg uh, put in a uh, low, that low price being 2905 all the way up to the high on December 18th. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, I think on this one here, I've got to pull this back. I've not been a real big fan of uh, pegs. Now I've got to really remember why. Let's put this on a, a weekly chart out here. And I think it's just simply been, we haven't seen a sign of strength in this uh, in this equity here. Uh, okay, so in, in the case of peg, here's what I'm really looking at, Victor. And my opinion won't change on this equity. And it's trading inside this high volume swing point, which is August 12th, 2011. And what uh, what you want to see is you want to see 31, I'm sorry, 27.97. That's your number. You want to see the 27 dollar 97 cent range tagged, and you want to see it do it on a weekly chart and do it with less than 31 million shares closed back above it. Then wait for a sign of strength, and then go ahead and uh, draft right behind that sign of strength out there. But wait for a sign of strength to uh, come into the picture. Let's go take a look at. Let me see if there's any other big names here. What they are doing. Uh, to the uh, downside, what do we got here? How about Biogen? That's off one uh, percent here. It's down two bucks and change. Let's go take a look at uh, Biogen B I I B. That has been a uh, that's that's a that's been a, a big uh, name in the I B D list out here. So this thing is breaking back below a. Uh, boy, it's hard to say. This thing here. Okay, so this thing came out with some kind of a, a, a news announcement on January third. Big volume to the upside. It, it, it gapped down. I went ahead and closed back up and uh, did the volume that day of 5.8 million shares. Uh, it is uh, trading below that area right now. Volume so far today on BIB, uh, Biogen, 544,000 shares as it's coming into 2.3 million shares. So it's got some volume picking up in this thing here. Uh, this could be, put this on a weekly, well, geez. 
The next time you see any volume in this equity here is back in April of 2011 at 99 bucks. It's 140 bucks right now. That's a, let me put this on a weekly here. You talk about, you know, take a look at where volume is at on this. Let me see what the monthly here shows on this chart. Yeah, whoa, well, is that dangerous or what, folks? The, uh, that's really dangerous. Look at this equity. So we're talking about Biogen, which has clearly had one heck of a uh, run. And the uh, volume on this equity is March 31st, 2005. $33 and, uh, and change. Trading at 141 bucks here right now. Very interesting. Let's go take a look at uh, Google. That's trading to the uh, downside. G-O-O-G -O -O -G is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, that is, uh, so, let's see, okay, so Google here, you know, moving into its uh, sign of uh, weakness, its downdraft, huge downdraft. Google has got so much work to do, uh, and it looks like maybe the work might end up being first to the uh, downside. So moving into that October 18th, October 19th uh, time frame where it had 11 million shares, 12 million shares to the uh, downside here. Uh, Google is trying to complete an A to B equals CD up pattern that would take you to 752. The, the ideal short on this, I don't know that it'll get up here, would have been or would be the October 18th swing point high, which is 759.42 uh, out there. Let's take a look at uh, what this is doing on a daily basis as far as whether it's overbought or oversold. So you can see up here towards the overbought territory. So right now just really moving sideways. Volume, not a big deal, 589,000 shares to, uh, to the... Uh, uh, to the uh, 580,000 shares so far in the first hour and 15 minutes of trading. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, indexes out here. I want to take a look at the Russell because the Russell here, which has been a uh, leader. This uh, Let me look at the daily indexes. There we go. So the Russell here. Okay, so the Russell about to give you a bearish engulfing candle. Remember that number on the index is 877.01. 877.45. It's at 877.35 right now. So you got the Russell giving you a uh, indication here. That's going to be important to uh, watch. Now you want to get some follow through. Ideally, you'd see the Russell move back into the lower part of its range. That would be a close, not today, uh, not that it couldn't happen today, but uh, back in the range would be below the September 14th swing point high, which is 868.50. If it doesn't do that, the Russell really is unimpeded from being able to move higher. It's got nothing on the left side of the chart to stop it from uh, moving higher out here. And that is the, that's why you really want to be paying attention to the Russell for a signal out here. Because if you take a look at just normal expansion, uh, the Russell could move up to the 897, 900 uh, uh, dollar level. Uh, however, so that's why you want to be paying attention to this. It isn't in the over, uh, it is in the over uh, bought condition. So it's got to work its way off. But, you know, candle signals and volume will uh, go ahead and uh, give you an indication uh, as to uh, uh, what it's going to do. Let's take a look at the ETF itself. Let's take a look at the IWM. I can give it to you on the IWM. Same real setup here. Let's go ahead and get rid of the ABCD pattern that is out here. Let me do this. Let's get rid of everything. So on the IWM, you're looking for a close. Uh, again, bullish or bearish. You look no matter what. I'm not really taking one side or the other. I do believe the market moves up into uh, you know tomorrow, Monday, uh, where you start to see a reversal. There's just simply enough indicators out there that suggest that this move just is going to is, is going to pull back and pull back in a bad way. And in the end, so you're looking now for indicators. On the bullish side, you want to be paying attention to these, to these signals as well. And so in the uh, IWM, uh, the open yesterday was 8702. It's trading at 8706 right now. You get a close below 8702. Uh, that would be, there's no other bearish engulfing candles out here coming off of, well, you got one. I take that back. You did have bear. The bears showed up on December 12th and December 13th. Uh, inside the uh, small caps out here. So since that time frame, this would be the uh, first time that the uh, bears would uh, show up out here. Of course, the, uh, uh, so anyways, that's on the IWM. Let's take a look at the uh, the uh, spies out here. Let's see what the uh, spies, we'll go ahead and take a look at each of the uh, ETFs. So we'll take a look at the spies here first. And the spies are still, were they able to get up into the September 14th? Looks like they were. So low of September 14th out here, in the uh, spies is 146.76, uh, gets up this morning to 146.83, so tags that area. 32 million shares, that's going against uh, 169 million shares. Ideally, the uh, bearish case here would be to uh, close below today, your, your ultimate bearish case, potential bearish case, I'll say, 
would be a, a close below 145.87 to 146.29 and do it on less than 169 million shares. Then you would have tested the September 14th swing point on lighter volume and you would have gotten a, a bearish a reversal candle signal today. So that would be on the uh, spot. You'd have to see a, a decent sell-off here uh, during the day. Let's take a look at the uh, diamonds. And let's take a look at the diamonds. The diamonds here, in my opinion, are, you know, we talk about the NASDAQ being weak. The uh, Dow is the, uh, in my opinion, is the second weakest of the uh, four indexes that we follow out here. And the reason that I say that is uh, the uh, Dow, the diamonds, is still trading inside this point seven eight six Gartley sell pattern out here has not really been able to bust through that level. Now uh, I've got that finishing at about the one thirty four uh, level uh, on January fourth. It got up to one thirty four twenty, closed at one thirty four. And you can see if you're watching on uh, Tiger TV, uh, you're looking inside the den. You can see the uh, blue shaded area. That is the Gartley sell pattern. And if we take a look at it, it's not a Tiger Gartley, but it's still a Gartley sell pattern here. So on the spies, in order to be able to have any kind of bearish signal today, what you would, uh, the, 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 and it, look, there are other bearish candles other than uh, uh, bearish engulfing candles. So there's piercing, uh, there's a, a piercing uh, type uh, candles that are out there. But uh, today here, if you get a, a close below uh, 133.40, it's trading at 133.87 right now, uh, that would be a, a bearish uh, signal. Now, you know, you could get a, uh, today you could get a, uh, uh, a uh, uh, um, uh, man, a dark cloud cover candle. Thank you. Just uh, had to come, and it wouldn't have to close all the way down below the 133.40. But I prefer the uh, bearish engulfing candle as a signal out here. Again, uh, let's go to di diamonds. Let's take a look at volume here today. Uh, volume here today is a uh, 1.2 million shares. Uh, this is going against 4.7. Uh, the January 4th swing point out here. That's got 4.7 million shares out here. Uh, but it's really going up against the supply line of 10 million shares from October the 19th out there. Now let's finish this off by taking a look at the uh, Qs and see what the uh, Qs are doing out here. The Qs trading out at 66.80. Uh, so the Qs uh, trading uh, down here. Now the Qs here, where the signal comes on the Qs is this. The Qs have tested this area of support. And it's got a, a good area of support, which is uh, by the uh, gap up on January 2nd. So if you take a look at January 2nd, that low out there is 66.48. Gaps up with 70 million shares. Uh, 66.48, it was tested at 66.47 on the 4th of January, 33 million shares. That was a test and a rejection. A test again on 26 million shares on January 7th. A test and a rejection closes back above. A test with 28 million shares on January the 8th and rejected that on both price and volume. So the real clue coming from the Qs would not be giving you the bearish engulfing today, which would be uh, closing below 66.62, but what it would be, it would be piercing the support area. So you'd want to see a close below 66.48 out here, because that is a tested support level inside the uh, queues. If it moves down into 66.48 today and closes back above it, it just shows you how strong that little support area. Will those gaps get filled? They will. But you need to respect what the windows are telling you with regard to support and resistance out here. Dow is up 10 points. S&P up 3. Composite up 94 cents right now. Well, we'll be right back. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get 
access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, and stay tuned today. Following this show, we got uh, Basil Chapman from 11 to 12, Larry Pesavento from 12 to 1, Daryl Martin 1 to 2, David White 2 to 3, the Ken Shreve. Uh, Ken Shreve from 3 to 4 in the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6 out there. And don't forget, folks, go over to the homepage of TFNN.com and sign up for our great Panther Silver Getaway. I don't know, I'm not sure if that's what it's called. I'm, I'm just coming back into it. But there is a. if you go over to the homepage, you'll see the opportunity to sign up for some uh, silver uh, out there, silver ounce uh, coins, half ounce coins, just the whole gamut. And so uh, it's very easy to do. So please go over to the homepage and do that. And we're going to want to, uh, I don't know if Basil is listening in right now, but... I'm going to ask him, I'll do it at least through the uh, den, to uh, take a look at uh, Google for us. You know, if you haven't had a chance to uh, test drive the uh, den, folks, that's one thing that you should do. And you can do that also while you're over at the homepage of TFNN.com. One of our members in the den, Z, pointed out that uh, Google today had made a .786 retracement, uh, which was at the uh, uh, $745, even Stephen, round number high. 
And that's I see Basil is in there, and I want him to talk about because Basil has done a lot of work on round number highs, and so the actual uh, seven eight six retracement off of the highs, which came in on October fifth, down to the lows on November the sixteenth out there would have been seven forty four seventy seven. But uh, we're going to cut. Uh, uh, Leonardo Fibonacci, a little bit of slack here. It actually got up to 7 to 45 even. So stay tuned. I'm sure Basil will go ahead and uh, talk about that round number high out there. I'm going to go ahead and listen in on that. You did have uh, Google. You did have Google getting up and coming into that downdraft, those serious downdraft days from October the 18th and the uh, 19th out there. So uh, just a uh, great education all day long. Uh, let's go take a look at, let's see here. We've got the LinkedIn. I have not looked at LinkedIn and what seems like forever, that is uh, the uh, uh, up $3.36 LNKD. So let's go see what uh, LinkedIn is uh, doing. Gapping up here this morning. And uh, let me just refresh my chart and get rid of a number of things that are on, on this thing here. That way I start from uh, scratch as we take a look at uh, LinkedIn. And uh, the gap's up. It's trying to take on, trying to get up in here into the swing point. Which, uh, so this has got, excuse me, folks, I haven't looked at this chart in forever. So the most recent uh, reversal signal that it had was right back here on October 3rd, October 4th, and October 5th. It put in a, uh, <clears throat> put in a uh, evening star pattern out here. So resistance on this is at the 123.41. It's trading into that area, trading into the bottom of the area, which was October 5th. Now, not a lot of uh, volume uh, there, but it did gap up, and for some reason that is acting as a area of resistance. It is trying to take out a swing point here, which was December 26, which has 1.3 million shares. It's got uh, plenty of volume today. It's already got 1.3 million shares. So, you know, is this trying to set up an A to B equal CD? It's got some resistance right up here. So if I put the line across the uh, screen here, you can just see just simply horizontal resistance, which you could have drawn. And then if you had known that this three candle pattern right here was also a reversal signal. So that is where uh, uh, LinkedIn should run into resistance, whether it gets past this swing point on volume or not, it should run into resistance at about the 123.43 uh, level out here. I'm going to go back and uh, quickly take a look at MasterCard. Uh, we're taking a look at MasterCard being one of those stocks to uh, give us an indication as to uh, the market and whether it might turn. So uh, has not, it's off of its uh, session lows here, but again, the number on MasterCard to be paying attention to. Watch to see if MasterCard today closes below 525.20. Uh, stay tuned again for uh, Basil. You've got the Dow up 14, S&P's up three, Composite up three as well. Small caps up a buck, off a buck 60. Silver here trading up uh, about uh, is it up a one and a half percent. Still not too. Uh, it's still running into resistance. I believe it's the 20-day exponential moving average. Thanks so much for being here, folks. I will see you in the morning. Take care.